I'm holding a VHS copy of the 1989 comedy, Look Who's Talking, starring Vincent Vega and the boy in the plastic bubble, John Travolta. Holly Thompson from They Live, Meg Foster. I'll do whatever you want, whenever you want. Wait, that was Kirstie Alley? Well, I look like a big fat pilgrim. And David Addison Jr. from Moonlighting, it's Officer John McClain, Bruce Willis. Ah, uh, look at that, another little arm coming in down there. What's it doing way down there? Now how am I gonna get that in my mouth? In the time it takes to rewind this tape, I'm gonna answer all of your baby-making questions. Like, what do you think is better, the blue or the lamb? Neither, they both look pretty lame. I don't know, what do you think? The lamb, right? Not lamb, lame. How many babies does it take to change a light bulb? What's a light bulb? I don't get it. And are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> Lunch. I answer all these and more on this preschool edition of BHS Breakdown. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm Miguel Jose. I own a ton of movies, but they're all on VHS. No one wants to buy them. I can't even give them away. So I'm gonna watch these films and break them down one last time. <laughs> you have some exotic baby disease. And I look like I could play the lead in Night of the Living Dead. And your father deserted us so that he could pork his interior decorator. So I just watched the tape. And I always remembered this film as a silly comedy about a talking baby. Yeah, right back at you, babe. But what I just witnessed was the most graphic porno I have ever seen. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. Oh, God, Molly. I'm gonna burst if you don't kiss me soon. The movie starts with a really intense POV shot. And by POV, I mean point of view. From inside her vagina. Oh, 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 this is literally the most extreme close-up of an accidental cream pie ever. You don't hold still, I can't get it out. It hurts. On the receiving end of this unwanted money shot is Rebecca Howe from Cheers. You look lousy, doll. She plays an accountant who's having an affair with one of her clients. A married man with kids. Of course I love you, Albert, but you're married. So yeah, let's make her the hero of the movie. She's got a great behind for a 40-year-old. She's being led on by a guy who claims he's gonna leave his wife for her. But here's a message to all you gumads. He's never gonna leave his wife! Why wouldn't he have left her already if he actually loved you? Oh, I know why. Because he doesn't. And because he's never leaving his wife! You know I'm leaving. Takes time. So she finds out she's pregnant. How could this have happened? But she can't tell anyone who the father is because it's a married man. You're not the only one with problems. So she tells everyone, including her mom, that she was artificially inseminated. I went to the clinic and got some frozen sperm. I brought it home, defrosted it, inserted it. And her mom handles the news rather offensively. I don't understand this. This is the kind of a thing a girl does if she's very ugly or a lesbian. And as would happen to Kirstie Alley later in her life, she starts really packing on the pounds. But at least her boobs look nice. Oh, my God. You got your figure back, didn't you? This is not my figure. Well, you got Dolly Parton's figure back. But she's about to have the baby, and guess what? We find out that dirtbag was cheating on her. <laughs> not with his wife with some other random slut bag while his mistress is pregnant. It, it just happened and I had to act on it. Way to go, you cheating bag of douche. Molly, you Molly. lousy asshole! Out of nowhere, she goes into labor. And this is where we meet cab driver John Travolta. Hey, what are you, Lesbo? Who, when he finds out she's giving birth, oh, shit. starts driving like a maniac asshole all throughout town. Somehow they let this smelly, low-life cab driver in the delivery room with her. Give me some drugs! Pre-9-11 security was <laughs> up. <laughs> but she has the baby, they show an extremely graphic cutting of the cord, and then she vows to find a good father. And I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna get you the best daddy there is. Which starts with not picking John Travolta. Don't test me! 
I mean, first he almost kills her in that cab ride. God, you idiot! Then he walks in and starts smoking a cigarette right in front of a newborn. Don't smoke that around my baby. She clearly doesn't know this guy. But she decides to trust him and leave her kid alone with him. Will you just watch him for a couple of minutes while I change my clothes? Sure. What mom would do that? <laughs> then we learn the best thing about parenting. Crying babies. I totally can see why all you parents do this. And I made a decision, I want to have a baby. So the mom goes on a few terrible dates, and then she runs into Travolta again. This time, he's stealing her mail. You stupid son of a bitch are stealing my mail! Only he's not really stealing it. He's just using her address so he can put his crazy grandfather in a home. Because that's not shady at all. So you wanted to use my mailing address to set up residency? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. So when Kirstie Alley finds this out, how does she punish him? By letting him be the new babysitter for her kid. All right, then. Friday night. So now, this filthy, smoking, mail-stealing cab driver is going to be in charge of her kid. This mom's worse than Elliot's. There's nothing like that, penis breath! Elliot! <laughs> Sit down. So now that he's the babysitter, what's his first move? He kidnaps the kid and takes him for a ride in his cab without telling the mom or letting her know where he's going. Because that wouldn't drive a new mom crazy. Whoa! Speaking of cab rides, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to strap a newborn in the front seat of your car. Molly decides to go flying with John Travolta, mostly because he peer pressures her into it. Come on, fly with me. No, I I'm not that kind of person. Come on. No, it's just not my deal. You scared? I mean, who wouldn't trust this scumbag enough to go flying with him? Give me your hand. Put it on my stick. I don't want to put it on your stick. And she has no problem grabbing his stick in the cockpit. Just put it on my stick. Right, so I mean... Oh, that feels good, dude. Um, so him and Molly start to get hot and heavy. Whoa, baby! Hot mama! Hot mama, you are such a good ball! But before he can park his plane in her terminal, she decides against it once she pictures their terrible future together. Did I tell you we'd live like kings or what? We <laughs> sure did. Uh. So she doesn't bang him, which is really the only smart decision she makes the entire movie. I can't get all swept up in sex and emotion and stuff. That's how I got in trouble. Then we meet Travolta's senile grandfather, Abe Vigoda. The woman has thousands more nerves in the sexual organs than the man. Remember that. <laughs> who amazingly is still alive today in 2014. They got good shrimp here. I mean, he must have been 85 years old when they filmed this in 1989, which makes him 120 years old today. Get the hell out of here. But Travolta's grandfather starts going nuts at the old folks' home, biting black people and punching women right in the face. You see what he did to my arm? And he gave the nurse a black eye. So the grandfather's clearly unstable, right? <laughs> Well, not enough that they can't leave him alone in charge of Mikey. I'll keep my eye on him for you. Are you sure? Oh, sure. Okay, I'll be back in just one minute. The mom thinks that the orderly is watching him, but this employee of the month just walks away. It's hard to blame him, though, because it is lunchtime. DJ, time for lunch, man. Let's go. So Grandpa's alone with Mikey, but he just walks away and leaves him by himself. Because, like I said a million times, he's a nut job! But Mikey runs away, he escapes in a car, and John Travolta and Molly chase him all throughout town, where he just avoids getting killed in a 15-car pileup. <laughs> Although, one quick note. Did everyone notice those mom jeans Kirstie Alley was wearing? Man, 80s fashion was ridiculous. But Mikey's okay, and he even says his first words. Dada. Notice that he doesn't say mama. Probably because she's a terrible mother. Is he taking a dump? No, he's thinking real hard. So these two end up together even though they probably shouldn't. And we end the movie with another disgusting close-up of sperm swimming around her fallopian tubes. Ugh, let's just end this already. Well, tape's done rewinding. And I was gonna smash this tape myself. But I think that job's better left off for a real man.